Welcome back to the Engineered Angler. We're doing a quick midweek video just to answer some questions that I've been getting on uh, the YouTube channel and on Facebook. I'm trying to get the longer videos posted uh, in the end of the week, like Friday, Saturday. The reason I'm doing this video is because I really like to do a little fill in since I'm getting a lot of questions and really good, smart questions on a few topics. I thought, you know what? Why not do a video and answer those questions uh, directly with everybody. I had a question on uh, the hinge and, I had, and it's used before I use it. Question on, on issues with twist. I had a concern about is the wood strong enough to handle it? And another question that was a really good point on whether it was going to cast well. So I'm going to go ahead and answer all these questions right here right now. And if you've been enjoying these videos, please subscribe. It's free and it helps me out. It really does. It helps me out keeps me enthused. It keeps the channel growing, which means I, I, I start to work my way out from under the uh, wet blanket of the YouTube algorithm. It also gives me an opportunity to kind of read what really is interesting to the folks out there. And this way I can mold my content a little more to the kind of things you guys want to see. Let's get to it. Question number one. People have pointed out uh, that this double hinge system has been used before in uh, lures. And I, I know that. Uh, it's not new. It's double hinges have been around for a couple thousand years uh, and they've been used in uh, lures since people have been making lures really. Uh, so I hope I didn't unintentionally make it sound like I was coming up with something brand new. I'm not. This is just something I'm using because I think it'll work well on this particular lure. The second question was really kind of sharp. Uh, I had a question about twist and the question was whether the this particular hinge was going to be susceptible to twist issues now there are two ways i can look at that one is whether the hinge itself is going to induce a twist in the lure and the answer to that is no and there's a couple of reasons for that the first is that the hinge is in line with the flow of the fluid as the as this lure streams along in the water it'll rock back and forth but never wanting to twist because there's no real in inducement to twist. The other side of that question is whether the hinge can actually take a twisting load. And that's a, a pretty good question. The lucky thing for us is that for there to be a twisting load on one end of the lure, there would have to be a, a twisting reaction on the other side. And since it's connected to a string, a line, you're not going to get any reaction on that other end. Therefore, there won't be any real twisting load on this. Now, there could be one uh, if the the fish jumped out of the water and accelerated the lure really fast with a hard head shake you could get some twisting action but it would be limited because it would be proportional to the weight of the lure which is pretty light i had a viewer who was concerned that the wood would be the weak point in the whole system and ironically it's the strongest part of the system and i know it's a little counterintuitive but let me uh, describe to you how that strength is going to be if we look at just one of the ends If you look at this end and considering that is the pin and this is that bulbous slot end, the typical failure mode that would be expected is for this wood to fail as a rupture out in that direction, right? That section of wood would rupture and pull out this whole portion. And that is a rupture in shear and in shear that is parallel to the grain. So. The strength of this particular wood is 8,800 kilopascals, which is a unit of measure of pressure. That's equal to 1,160 PSI. Now, if we want to know what the square inches are, we'll take a look at the smallest uh, part of this lure that's going to actually be loaded. Let me get another color. That would be that those sections in here that you would see would be cutting that disc in half and here as well be right in the middle of that pin and back so you'd have four sections and the dimensions would be and this is being very conservative if you're looking at this it's uh, a little over a quarter of an inch it's actually close to three eighths on the bottom and oh, quite a bit more up here but you know to be conservative we're going to call it a quarter of an inch it's a it's five eighths of an inch deep we're going to call it half an inch and so if you've got a quarter inch times a half an inch you end up with an eighth of an inch 
squared, right? And since there's four of them, four times an eighth is a half. Half a square inch. So if you multiply 1160 times a half, you end up with 580 pounds. So this wood loaded in this way can handle 580 pounds. Now, if I wanted to be more conservative and cut that in half, I'd still have substantial amount of strength here, probably more than those little pins can handle. The question of casting distance. I think I've mentioned this before in other videos. Lures that have uh, segmented sections, either broken back or single segment or multiple segments, tend to be poor casting lures. They won't go as far as a well-weighted, uh, well-shaped lure designed to really cast a long ways. These aren't designed to cast a long ways. So I'm not expecting a long cast from this lure. And in fact, my intention is to troll it behind the boat. But that's all the questions I have right now. Keep those questions and comments coming. They really make it interesting for me. I really like the fact that the community is really building and we're, we're able to kind of interact a little more. It makes it fun for me and, you know, when are you going to be able to ask a professional engineer a question and not get a bill in the mail? <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. Subscribe, share this stuff, and I'll catch you on the next video.